Well, thank you. Good morning. And apologies for being a bit um, late due to technical difficulties, particularly for my, my friends on the panel. Um, welcome to the press launch of Cyber Centurion 7. Um, and thank you for joining us to learn a little bit more about Cyber Centurion, the competition that it is, um, and hopefully to help us broaden the inclusion to Cybersecurity 7 um, and its reach out to a wider pool of students across the UK. Um, we're very conscious that 2020 has been a pretty tough year for students this year um, with the restriction on their ability to attend school, the ability to get together and do team events um, and of course the difficulty in reaching out and building their skills this year. So we're very keen to support students during 2020 to lift their skills, particularly in uh, cyber security and computer skills and using Cyber Centurion as a vehicle to achieve just that. Um, this year we're absolutely determined to do that and reach out more widely um, and the good news is this particular sector that th that is cyber security and computer skills is one that's bucking the trend of the economy uh, there's huge growth and continued demand for skills in this area and so it presents a huge opportunity for students to build skills and build future careers for themselves now cyber centurion itself is designed to kind of play on the strengths of the lateral thinkers the different thinkers um, the puzzle solvers and game players indeed, um, by bringing their skills to bear in a very constructive, forward-looking way in the domain of cybersecurity. Um, and I think it kind of presents a career option that many students wouldn't even necessarily think about. Maybe we'll hear from our um, colleague later on about some of the options that cybersecurity and cyber in itself has opened for people in the UK. Um, so we want to reach out to some of the students who may be less aware of cybersecurity or less aware of their computer skills or ability to engage in computing um, and give them the opportunity to raise their profile, raise their engagement in this important domain. Now, Northrop Grumman has been sponsoring this competition since the very beginning in 2014, uh, when originally there were just a few dozen teams participating to the point now where there are many thousand. Um, and we do this because we very much believe in developing the underlying skills that support our business and indeed the UK economy more generally. Um, we have a proud culture of pioneering innovation and leading in some of the most leading edge technology programs around the world. And a good example is the work we're doing in the space domain, which my colleague David Pyle will talk about a bit later. But that spans from the very beginning of space exploration back in the 1960s where Northrop Grumman built the Lunar Lander, Eagle, um, in the very early days, 1968, all the way through to today, where we're supporting the Cygnus missions into space only this week, and we're supporting the 2024 NASA landings onto the moon. So it's absolutely a leading edge area where cybersecurity is absolutely at the heart of our innovation and technology. So to enable any student to participate, and every school to get engaged in Cyber Centurion, um, there are no entry fees. And for the successful teams who make it through to the final, we cover all their travel and accommodation and food costs to try and make sure that there is no exclusion uh, through Cyber Century and Seven. Um, on the panel this morning, I'm very grateful uh, for sparing their time, uh, insight and brilliance uh, to join us. And um, we've got four outstanding panelists um, who are gonna make some comments through this morning. Uh, Professor Deep Chana of uh, Imperial College, is a STEM advisor to government and wider enterprise and a passionate supporter of STEM and STEM skills to the wider population. Um, Nitya Sriyadapala has joined us as a former, uh, well, former winner of the um, girls category in Cyber Centurion and a keen student in this area from uh, Tiffins College in Kingston. Um, Charlene Richardson has kindly joined us from Trowbridge, a ICT and computer science teacher uh, from a school there, um, get my school right, St. Augustine, St. Augustine's Catholic School uh, in Trowbridge. And last but not least, David Pyle, my esteemed colleague from Northrop Grumman, um, who's the Regional Director of Space for UK, Europe and the Middle East, and is heavily involved in all the space programmes we're pursuing here. So hopefully that gives a sense of the why we do this, the range and inclusion of Cyber Centurion 7, um, and a chance to speak to some of the enthusiastic and much appreciated panelists we have this morning. Um, we're going to try and keep these sessions short and punchy to give you the chance to ask questions and understand uh, what's going on. We will hold uh, kind of questions to the end of the panel sessions, then have a, a wider debate. But without any further ado, let me hand over to uh, Professor Charna, please, for 
um, your views and feedback, Deep. Thanks, Nick. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me uh, clearly. Um, it's a real pleasure to be uh, part of this panel and part of this um, activity this morning. Um, as Nick says, I've got a real passion for this, uh, this whole area of kind of uh, promoting uh, people engaging with STEM. So I've been asked this morning to, to sort of talk a little bit about myself. It's possibly my least favorite topic, but um, I'll give you a little bit of a biographical kind of overview of, of, of really my journey through STEM and also the reason why I care about this, uh, this kind of activity so much. So both my parents really instilled a passion for science in me um, and my two siblings actually from a very early age. My mother was a healthcare professional all her working life. Um, and my father was um, a wildlife vet. So we had a lot of science and scientific stuff going around in the house from a very young age. Um, my family actually arrived in the UK in the mid 80s from North Africa um, and I ended up going to high school um, in a West London comprehensive not far away from where I'm talking to you now. Um, and I have to say that growing up in that environment I was very lucky to have friends uh, from a diverse range of backgrounds um, but it has to be said that everyone in that very diverse range of people that I knew also seemed to have varying social conditions at home and in their lives in general. And this meant that people faced very different circumstances and had varying difficulties and challenges away from school um, that influenced them, I would say, quite negatively when it came to their aspirations, particularly when it came to thinking about um, tackling STEM subjects, which were often seen as perhaps a little bit out of reach for most people. Um, and this sort of played out, I guess, in the playground with anyone who was interested in science or tech at the time, pretty much being labelled as a bit of a weirdo or a nerd. One of the key differentiators of my school experience was that I had some amazing teachers who put their time, uh, their spare time aside, really, for um, our out of hours of activities and projects. In particular, we had activities on design technology, IT and programming, and a very specific activity on space and space science. I pretty much went uh, to all of them um, um, and it was the idea of our deputy head at the time actually to create um, a space society through these different activities and this space society was really pretty much the first of, a, of its kind in the country um, there wasn't anything else that I think that we could that we were aware of and through this process as I said luckily I was encouraged um, uh, Despite, I guess, some protestations, um, not being not being particularly confident at that point in my um, at that point in my life, I was encouraged to become the first president of that space society, and over the years managed to get involved in some really amazing activities. As a result, um, we built several ten-foot rockets from scratch, which we launched at, launched at MOD sites in the UK, and even did a launch in France. Um, I was the youngest sponsored participant in the first ever UK space school as a result of this space society. Um, and at one point we also relocated a satellite weather station from Imperial College London, where I work now, the roof of Imperial in fact, to our school roof. Um, and you can now buy all of the tech for this stuff in a little box uh, with a little monitor these days. But in those days it meant moving a three meter metallic dish with a very, very heavy mount and a custom built computer that was the size of a wardrobe across London piece by piece. And this involved several weeks of disassembly and reassembly and then endless fiddling with the system to coax it to get to get something out of it um, all over the summer holidays, actually. And I remember the first printout we got uh, we got out of this system of cloud cover over the UK uh, was a pretty special moment uh, for the four of us, who, as I said, had spent most of our summer uh, fiddling around with this project. We also managed to go to Moscow a couple of times, which was very interesting to visit Mission Control. We were one of the first ever science exchange schools and programs with what was then the USSR. Um, uh, so we, we got to see parts of the world at a very interesting time. Um, and a lot of these activities were covered by national press um, and we were lucky enough to make it into, into uh, into newspapers and, and even a little bit of TV coverage, which was pretty crazy. And uh, at the time for a group of kids from West London coming from the kind of school that I did. Um, and you also have to remember it was, a, I guess it was pretty cool because at that time there was no, there were no mobile phones, there was no internet and certainly no YouTube. So, uh, so being recorded and put on TV was still quite a special thing, probably more than it is now. Now, due to the diversity of the school population and the principles of our teachers, Having a mix of boys and girls and people of uh, different ethnicities 
was actually pretty normal um, at my school in all of these activities. It was one of the real benefits of being in, in that environment. Um, and aside from the classroom, it was really these projects that we got involved in that, that turned people on to the excitement of science and using it to solve problems with real world results. Um, in all of the projects I've described, you know, we had to build circuit boards, we had to program chips and computers, we had to engineer rocket engines from scratch uh, and uh, make parts and turn parts on lathes. Uh, many of you won't know what that is, but for those of you who don't know what a lathe is, it's, it's a method of subtractive manufacturing as opposed to the more fashionable additive variety that we hear uh, lots about these days. Um, but I've got to say that other schools in a similar position, in a similar area with similar kind of uh, uh, structure, really had nothing like the initiatives that, that I had uh, at our school. So I was very lucky in that respect. Um, and even within my school, only a limited number of people really ever felt that these activities were for them. Um, and on the odd occasion, however, when we did succeed in convincing someone who probably didn't feel that confident to be part of this, th these kind of activities and who was hesitant to come along, invariably they ended up loving it. I mean, almost without exception. And I can remember many cases of that happening. Years later, as a PhD student, um, I was studying physics at King's College London. And um, my then head of department and a very good friend of mine tried to get me involved, well, he got me involved actually in a project which was very close to his heart at the time, which was creating a network of cosmic ray detectors across uh, schools in London. And the idea was to go across the UK. And this emulated a project that had been very successful in California. And what we tried to do was to get kids to actually build the detection stations themselves. So they physically would build the detectors, um, hook everything up and end up running uh, a monitoring station, generating real data and contributing real data to proper scientific research, um, effectively by being a member of a global network of these detection centers. So it was a really, really great project to get people engaged in, in, in fundamental science and, uh, and STEM. Problem was that try as we might, it was, it was actually very difficult to find schools such as mine uh, that I'd grown up in and inner city schools and other schools of that sort, comprehensive schools who could commit the resources and the time to participate. Um, and that was a that was a that was quite a you know disheartening thing to go through, and and that was nearly twenty years ago. And if we fast forward to today, in my current role um, as professor at Imperial College, it is still disheartening to see that we are struggling to achieve the levels of diversity in STEM that we need, and, and that I would like to see. We definitely still have issues in attracting girls uh, to study STEM subjects, particularly in the more uh, mathematical uh, numerate disciplines. And there's also a truly uh, lamentable state of affairs, I have to say, when we look at the levels of inclusion from minority ethnic groups and socially deprived areas. The Black Lives Matter movement um, earlier on this year, um, which started earlier on this year, has really reawakened, I think, an important debate on how the world is still divided along these sort of illogical lines. And the truth of the matter is that for so many reasons, I think we really have to try and make progress now to start changing this at pace. Cybersecurity is an expanding uh, technology field. It's only set to grow in the coming decades as computing systems become more and more part of our everyday lives and, and proliferate nearly everything we do. And just viewed on its own as an industry, it's very likely that we will face a shortfall in talent um, in the cybersecurity industry over the coming years, unless we really cast the net as wide as possible to find the talent wherever it might be. And for me, that's the reason and that's the real driving reason to have uh, diversity as a, at the heart of the agenda for getting people involved in STEM. However, in a broader sense, cybersecurity is also quite similar to the sort of rocket projects that I was talking to you about that I did as a kid earlier on. It's similar in that it teaches you to be scientifically inquisitive and provides, I think, people a STEM skill set which can be applied to some of the most interesting and important challenges that we're facing in the world today and that we'll be facing in the world tomorrow. Getting people excited about the universe around us and engaging in science is the best way, in my mind, to demonstrate what cooperative human uh, ingenuity can achieve. And it's a way more productive and positive way to spend your time than being immersed in what often seems like a deluge of negativity in the world, uh, certainly at the moment. Uh, and for that reason, I'm very proud to be advocating for the Cyber Centurion program today. Um, and 
really trying to encourage kids and coaches from all different backgrounds to engage with it. Um, and particularly if the only thing is stopping you from engaging with it is a lack of confidence. Because I think if you apply to these kind of programs, if you engage in projects and get involved, uh, it will allow you to explore your full potential and, um, and you never know where it might lead from there. Um, I'm going to stop at that point and uh, I think we're going to hear some really interesting things um, from Charlene and, and Nitya, which will pick up on some of the things I've said. So I'll hand back to you, Nick. Thank you, Professor Deep. Um, it's a pleasure. It, it does kind of make me feel slightly old when you describe, um, I remember I spend my time on a lathe doing my engineering training. So um, thank you for that. I'm now an expert in subtractive manufacturing, which is clearly a has-been technology. So um, thank you. But your, your, your point is, is extraordinarily well made and, and appreciated that um, I think we do already have a dearth of talent and um, skills in cybersecurity and, and the need to plug that gap and, and actually use it as an opportunity to simulate a wider community of people to get involved in the uh, topic is, is a great opportunity. So, so thank you. Um, Nitya, can I, shall I hand over to you? Sure. Thank you everyone for having me on this panel today and thank you for talking about a woman in tech and how we need to get more women into technology. So my journey with cybersecurity actually started um, maybe three years ago and I initially got into it through cyber discovery which is like an online educational program and that introduced me to cybersecurity but a lot of the things that we covered through there were just capture the flag challenges. But then one of my friends came across Cyber Centurion and she introduced me to this whole competition and the way it works, et cetera. And immediately I was really excited because unlike the capture the flag challenges I was usually like used to, um, this was kind of more like a real life scenario um, it, we're just presented with a virtual operating system and we have to find vulnerabilities in it, just like how like probably people do in normal life. So it's that kind of real life hands on experience that I was really um, looking forward to in this competition. And in the first year when we all got together, we had no idea what we were expecting. Um, we didn't really have a mentor um, to really guide us through. So all of the stuff that we've done was very um, individual. We Every week we had to do our own research and on the weekends we'd present our research to all the other team members, um, three team members. And because we'd each assigned ourselves a different operating system to work on. So I was in charge of the Ubuntu Linux um, virtual operating system. And I just had to find out ways to resolve any vulnerabilities that might come up in the competition rounds. And after we did our own research every single week and presented it, we kind of gradually built our knowledge. And it was really nice to see that we were working well together as a team um, because all my team members, I'd never really talked to them before. Um, we just come together just because of our passion for technology and for cybersecurity. And so just kind of feeding off each other's passions and learning from each other every week. It was just a whole, like really great experience um, to go through the whole process. And definitely the best part of the whole experience is the final because when it's kind of like, wow, we finally reached this point, um, all our hard work has finally paid off. And although we had a lot of like stumbles along the way, some disagreements during competition rounds, some frustration, because of like tension from school exams, mock exams, also coupled with the tension from like the competition. Although we had our disagreements, I think we worked well together as a team. And that's what's so great about Cyber Centurion um, because you get to learn hard skills about cybersecurity as well as soft skills such as teamwork um, and more. And that's why I think as a result, we've become an inspiration to other students in my school. And my school is an all girls school. So originally there aren't like, there aren't many people who are interested in like physics or computer science. The majority of students go into medicine. Um, like I think there's only 20 people taking physics out of 200 people in my year. And there's only six people taking computer science. Uh, and so, it's a very small number of people, but I'm really glad that we could actually inspire other children in the years below. 
um, because in the year below us, the number of people taking computer science A level has jumped from um, six people in my year to 18 people in the year below. And before us, there was only maybe two or three people um, taking computer science A level. And after we introduced Computer Science Society last year, um, so after Cyber Centurion, we were really inspired to share our knowledge with others. So we set up Computer Science Society and our, we started off with cybersecurity, which was like a really popular topic for all the young children, for all the younger kids in the lower years. And so we went from four people in the society to now we have about 25 people. And although it's not much considering the size of the school, it's definitely an improvement over one year. And I think it is definitely going to increase um, even after I leave the school. And so, yeah, I think, I think it was kind of like a domino effect where we initially kind of introduced this kind of concept of, oh, look, you can also get involved in computer science. And now more and more children in my school are getting interested. So that kind of makes me feel really accomplished and really happy that I'm bringing more women into tech. And yeah, I hope more women do go into tech in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Nitya. I think, um, you know, your achievement is quite astonishing, really, because you not only did you get involved in um, Cyber, Cyber Centurion, but you came straight through to the finals and won um, the best all girls team. Was that your first or second time? Um, the first time, it was our first time ever. Um, in Two years ago was our first time ever. And we were just, it was completely new to us. We didn't know what to expect at all. And so we all we did was just keep trying. And it was also during our, um, like, year 11 like GCSEs mocks area and so we were already kind of pretty stressed from exams but we really needed to like find time to just devote to um, our passion out of school as well so it was really nice experience I think so it kind of helped me find passions outside of school instead of just doing textbook work in my computer science lesson it was very hands-on and it was really exciting so I'm really glad I took part in it then I'm delighted. Thank you. I mean, thank you for your enthusiasm and indeed how that spilled over into your into your schools to hear the numbers in, in computer science trebling as a result yeah. of your engagement. I think, <clears throat> not as you say, the numbers are still small, but um, as, <clears throat> excuse me, as Professor Deep uh, implied, the number of girls involved in, in computer science, physics and cybersecurity is woefully low. So uh, it's fantastic to see you trailblazing in that space. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Nitya. Um, Charlene, do you want to talk about what it means to be a teacher in this environment and, and get involved in Cyber Service Centurion and how challenging or otherwise it might be to make it work for you, you and your pupils? Yeah, um, thank you for having me first. It's amazing to be part of this. We really uh, enjoy the Cyber Centurion competition at St. Augustine's in Trowbridge. Um, it all kind of started with us as an IT team, there's just two of us in our department. Um, and it's become one of the most popular things that we do in our school, taking part in competitions such as this one. Um, we really wanted to offer real life experience to our students through cyber centurion, well, cyber competitions overall. Um, we started with our team of Little Miss Virtuals who made it to into the finals in their first attempt at this competition. Um, and then it kind of stemmed to the boys really wanting to take part as well. So it wasn't just our girls, um, the boys, were a bit jealous that it was just girls in the cyber first competition that we started with because that is all girls only and they really wanted a cyber centurion opportunity for themselves so we've now got several boys teams we've got mixed teams and it's kind of stemmed from there really um, and we haven't looked back the it's grown in popularity we've got five teams entering this year um from years nine all the way up to year 12 so it's a great opportunity and it's our last time for Little Miss Virtuals to all be together. So they're hoping to make it to the senior finals this time. Um, they've been practicing, they've been going on courses over the summer holidays uh, to boost their cyber security knowledge. And they feel like this time they're going to come in with extra knowledge to uh, hopefully get them to the final again, because they were very disappointed last year to miss out. Um, getting it all set up, we were actually... It's, we don't actually find it that difficult. At first, when I first thought about cyber centurions, I was a little concerned thinking, how is it going to be easy to set up for our school? Um, but in conjunction with our IT staff, there's only two of those as well. So two teachers of IT and two IT support staff for the whole school. We managed to get it set up relatively easy. 
install the virtual machines on separate computers in different IT rooms. And we booked the IT rooms out just for our cyber centurions. And we made it like a special occasion on a Friday, once a month for three months running. And the students just really got enthused and really excited about it. The idea of hearing points being scored in one area of the room and then someone getting like points taken away in the other area of the room. It was like oohs and ahs all around the room. It was really exciting. We gave them sweets to kind of motivate them and keep them going. The energy's boosted and they absolutely loved it. And it's gone from strength to strength. It's a competition that they really kind of think about and prepare themselves for. And they've really tried hard. And that's how we managed to get a group of year nine boys in last year to the final as well. Um, we had the IT support staff were on call during the day in case there was any technical issues. I don't remember any actually happening. Um, as soon as they're on there, they were on there for the whole day. Some stayed after school. And they found it really engaging. They were really keen to stay. Some of them missed their bus to go home. They were that keen as they had to get picked up by parents. Um, and it's for the, for the amount of like enthusiasm we get for the course, it's really worth taking on these opportunities to give them real world experience that they just can't get in a classroom. Um, we wish there were more competitions, to be honest. So I wouldn't let any other setup kind of put you off taking part. It's really easy to, once you've done it once, the next year, it's already there, ready to go. You just need to install it, get it started, and you know what you're doing. It's just that initial step, which we thought we're going to do it this year because, well, our first time we thought we're going to do it this year because our students really want to take part. And if we don't put the effort in, the students aren't going to think that it's worth taking part. So we went that extra mile to get them set up. And now it's a competition we look forward to. Um, and we get them registered as soon as we can. They come up with interesting names for themselves. Um, and it kind of lives with them, shall we say. Um, in terms of network security, it is beyond what we teach in the classroom. It's not something that we can easily access and give examples of. Um, so most of them take it as computer science as a GCSE. Some of the year nines aren't sure yet, but it normally sways them to take the course. Um, we've got a good mix of girls and boys in Key Stage for science, the computer science and IT. Um, and we use this as an opportunity to give them a bit of a real world experience in a situation that we couldn't give them. Um, it's beyond my knowledge. I'm not going to lie about it. I don't really get a chance to look at it very much. I let the students just get on with it, attempt the tech challenges and I check in on them as much as I can during the day when I'm not in lessons myself. And they enjoy that independence, experimenting, getting it right and wrong. Um, it's all about that independence. They love working for the points and they feel amazing when they get them. So. They, are, they really, really do appreciate the opportunity that we just can't give them. Um, we've also had a ripple kind of effect happening with our cyber centurions. We started with the girls Little Miss Virtuals and they started in year nine and they're in year 11 this year. And it's also spread down to keep year nine. Their brothers are now taking part and they are a year nine group for the Stormworms. So they shall be hopefully as able as the key stage four girls are. We've got the teams of boys, girls, and a mixed team. Both of our girls, well, our girls team made it to the final. The boys made it to the final last year. So we're hoping that we're going to make it again this year and hopefully maybe like really win it <laughs> would be a great opportunity for us. But it's a massive morale booster and an opportunity for them to meet experienced professionals, especially for the live competition. Nothing can take that away from them. They love that moment, meeting all other people taking part and really knowing that they are amongst the best of the best. Um, we, in terms of, I've just talked a little bit about how it's increased our computer science. Um, it really has. It's, it's made a massive difference. Um, when I started it in four years ago, it was popular with boys mainly. Um, we did cyber first to kind of encourage the girls and the girls just kept on going from strength to strength due to these competitions. They're normally a bit frightened at first, but now they're kind of, kind of following it. They really enjoy, they enjoy the challenge. They don't like to let anyone else know that they're doing that challenge, but they do enjoy taking part. And we've now got, we have 17 last year, we're going up to 26, and it's pretty much half and half in our year, year 10 and 11 classes in terms of computer science. So it's a great opportunity for them to experience network security in the real world, even if it's in space this year. Thank you. Thank you, Charlene. That's great. It sounds like um, you may have some competition from St Augustine's this year, Nitya, so um, watch out. Um, <laughs> the, 
you mentioned the kind of the enthusiasm it's driven in, in the school for um, computer science and engagement. That. Have you seen an increase in the number of students taking computer science as a topic at you know, GCSE level? Definitely. We had a full class this year. We couldn't take any more. We've had to turn people away. People, some people may have dropped it because they found it really difficult at first. And we've had people take it up. So there's no space for computer science. Which in itself is a worry, but it's fantastic <laughs> that the demand is there. Yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, David, do you want to talk about um, some of the things we're doing in the, in the space domain that um, maybe give some opportunities and excitement around what cybersecurity careers might offer? Sure, absolutely, Nick. And um, yeah, good morning to everyone. And uh, it's great to hear everybody's stories. Um, pretty amazing. Um, going back to sort of my, my school background, I, I came from a comprehensive school in, um, in, in the east of England. Um, and our school, you know, very similar to um, what Professor Deep said, we were lathes, metalwork, um, not really computers, but uh, building small hovercraft, I seem to remember. That used to be the sort of the engineering um, that we got involved in. Um, so sort of, it's just amazing to be working with Northrop Grumman and in the role I am uh, working in space is, um, is, is so interesting. Um, yeah, so as sort of a background to what we do in space, um, our space business, we've got about 20 or 22,000 people working in the space business. Um, we do all sorts of really wonderful things. Um, so we do a lot of work for NASA, uh, a lot of work for the US government and, and international governments, um, all really across the globe. Um, so we do rocket systems. Um, so as Nick mentioned, uh, this week we, um, we blasted off with our Antares rocket, um, with our Cygnus space capsule um, up to the space station to, um, to resupply the astronauts up there. Uh, and that's something we've been doing regularly for many years now and is you know, really exciting to really be part of that. Um, real world space uh, and actually taking the food and, and this time I think there was a new space toilet um, that was taken up to the, to the astronauts. Um, so all these things have to happen. Um, and then also we do uh, a whole range of satellites. Um, we, we work on the, the James Webb Space Telescopes. So we're building that at the moment. Um, James Webb Space Telescope will be the, the most powerful, the most complex space telescope ever, um, allowing us to sort of look back into, into, into the past and really discover things that, are, that, that happened many millions of years ago. So sort of taking what the Hubble telescope did, which was so amazing and taking really that sort of next step forwards um, with, with James Webb. Um, I guess one of the other ex really interesting areas at the moment, um, we've been doing something we call um, on orbit servicing or mission extension. Um, so this is where we work for a satellite that's running out of fuel and it's up there on orbit. Um, we launch another satellite and the sat our satellite goes up to the, the current satellite and obviously they're speeding around in orbit uh, and the two things link up. Um, so we use all that experience we've had with docking with the space station to join two satellites together in geostation reorbit. Um, and effectively our satellite then provides a jetpack. Um, so that means that the satellite that was up there running out of fuel has now got tens more years of life uh, and continues to do its job. Um, so that's you know, absolutely brilliant. And it's, it's one of the, well, it's the first time we ever done, have ever done that, started this year. And our second one is, is on the way up to orbit at the moment. Um, so that's, that's really, really good. Um, and I guess sort of linking to cybersecurity, um, yeah, all of the space systems, although you know, a lot of things are in space, obviously there's a ground segment to everything. Uh, and the ground segment is largely computers and networks. Um, and cybersecurity is a huge part of that. Um, the, the, the threats come from all over. Uh, and certainly from the design process through to the, the manufacturer and then the support of it. Um, cyber is very much in our, in our minds within the space business. So there's a lot of linkages there. Um, it really is um, a, you know, a big part of it. Um, so I guess, I mean, for, for me, if I, if I go back to my sort of 12 year old self, I, I very much like Professor Deep. I was one of the, uh, the nerds like computers, um, but I think we've heard from, um, from Charlene um, very much, you know, really this is an opportunity to get involved um and it's a yeah i think it's a it's a fascinating opportunity i really like that it's in space this year um, and links to cyber um you know that's a it's such a sector that's growing at the moment um with so much interest and and our government in the uk is really getting behind it as well so um it's yeah it's definitely a growth area uh, and as everybody said you know it's a great career and um opportunity to get in to get involved um something we say with the north we've got a Sort of our, our sort of strap line at the moment is um, it, it's impossible until it isn't, um, and I think that you know that applies very much to cyber centurion to so grab hold of the opportunity 
Um, certainly for me, you know, the thought of working in space and working with NASA and things that I do now was completely impossible um, when I was at school. Um, but it's it's come true. Um, so just grab hold of it and um, yeah, please go for it. Please join in. Thanks very much. Thanks, David. Um, I'm pleased you're enjoying it so much because it's, it's great fun. Some of the things we're doing and uh, some of the technology is quite amazing. And I guess maybe worth emphasizing is just how fundamental cybersecurity is to the, to the ability to operate in space. Without that, um, satellites are vulnerable, uh, operations are vulnerable, and bluntly wouldn't be allowed to fly as we do. So our cybersecurity skills are fundamental to our space operations and space business, um, and why it presents such a wide range of careers to people if they really do understand computer science and cybersecurity. There's, there's some great potential there. Um, that, that brings us to the end of all, all the formal panel session. Um, I think I've seen a few questions flash up uh, as we go through them too. Um, so one thing I found quite amazing in the competition last year was the number of what <laughs> teams who describe themselves as virtual teams. Um, that is teams that aren't from a single school, um, but they're from a group of individuals in, in several cases scattered across the country or indeed scattered internationally who have come together to form a virtual team um, and then being extraordinarily successful in Cyber Centurion. And I think for me that addresses partly your, the second part of your question, Ian, where people who are not in traditional school environments, don't have maybe a computer science network within their school, have been able to reach out to other interested students around the world. Um, we tend to restrict it to overseas territories in the UK to make it manageable, but certainly we've had um, students from Gibraltar, um, from all over the UK, including the Isle of Man, for example, last year, who have come together to form virtual teams and been extraordinarily successful. In fact, I think, I may be wrong in this, but I think if I remember correctly, awarding the prizes last year is one of the virtual teams who won uh, one of the big prizes. So I'm delighted to say it's not just schools based, it's also virtually team based. Um, and I think one of the things we have been delighted to see is that the range of people getting involved in cybersecurity and, and cyber centurion in particular has grown substantially since the start of the competition. It does seem to be successful in reaching out to groups of students who might not otherwise get involved and who seem willing to at least dip their toe in the water uh, through the competition and often then kind of jump in um, fulsomely into, into the subject as they get more enthused. So, as Nitya mentioned, um, the number of girls getting involved in um, cyber centurion has grown quite substantially over the years. And we now have um, within the overall competition an all girls competition that runs in parallel. Um, and we're very keen to reach out to ethnic minorities and get them involved in the, in the community. Um, indeed, I think last year we achieved 25% of the students who are involved who are coming from non-white backgrounds. And I think the more we can do that, the better it is. Um, because I'm very conscious that this is a great opportunity um, that people might not otherwise have to get involved in computer science and cybersecurity, where maybe their parents don't have visibility of those sort of careers or their personal network doesn't give them the access to those sort of careers. I just say that this year has been a huge push to try um, and uh, include people who haven't necessarily been um, involved before. And we're doing that in a number of ways. We're going out for a number of not-for-profits who work with um, what we call socioeconomic diversity, um, including the John Eggings Trust, um, who have their Blue Sky program, um, the Yorkshire Cyber Cluster, and uh, some not for profits based in that Yorkshire area, um, and even a social worker in London who has decided to be a team leader this year, who was working with um, a bunch of excluded students um, and felt that this was a real opportunity to get them involved. Um, at the challenge, we absolutely believe that socioeconomic diversity is one of the biggest pools of talent that's untapped at the moment. And the real strength of Centurion is that it is a broad pipeline project. It's uh, big, with its junior and senior divisions, with its cadet force, with its um, all male, all female, and mixed teams divisions, which is absolutely designed um, to bring in as many people as possible. Because frankly, if we just went for the best of the best of the best, um, we would be looking very much like the other programs that are on offer and we probably only get boys schools <laughs> you know independent boys schools in the in the finals and that's not the point um the other nice thing about it is that um you can uh try as a junior and you can run year after year after year you don't get winnowed out you know you can play in every single round you won't get to the final if you're not very good um but you will learn every year 
and um, and you can try each round as much as you can. And the other things mm -hmm. that uh, Centurion does, it provides training rounds with answers so you can see what you're supposed to be doing, then a practice round, um, which is much more like the real thing, and then you're into the competition. I think Norfolk Grumman and, and, and the American Air Force have really designed a, a product that is broad brush, as many people as possible. Um, and, you know, we're throwing ourselves against the wall this year to see how many people can get in because with COVID and a lot of kids not being able to get into school, a lot of them are now much more um, capable with remote working. And as uh, Nick pointed out, Highway to Hell, who was our winner last year, and Y2K, the previous year, both remote teams. They've even written up a blog on how to run a remote team. And it's just about, you know, logistics of getting the kids to work together at the same time, wherever it is they are remotely. So it's, it's a, a project that can absolutely be done remotely. And it is something where we're looking very much at that socioeconomic diversity pool in a way that some of the other programs just can't do. Well, I'll, I'll make an initial comment because I had the pleasure of um, coming out to Gibraltar last year to present the, the prize to the winning team. I mean, I think the, the Gibraltar team have done um, fantastic, teams uh, have done fantastically well. Um, in the Cyber Centurion competition, their, their engagement, their enthusiasm, um, the, the commitment shown by the teaching team in Gibraltar is really quite extraordinary. Um, and I think the results just show that and the level of enthusiasm that's been um, delivered as a result. And I think, um, I think maybe the, the, what the team in Gibraltar have shown is what can be done. Um, I think the number of uh, children involved in cyber security and computer science has gone from a pretty modest number over the last five years to the vast majority of those in secondary education in, in on the island um, and that's just quite extraordinary really so um, it's a it's a great reflection of what can be achieved. Yes I mean Gibraltar is uh, is remarkable I think that's the, the real word we've been working with them on other projects um, there's a new digital skills foundation which has come directly from um, Stuart Harrison who I th think is actually with us today um, uh, a driving energy to create this opportunity for students on the island. Um, they've got a competition coming up, which is being funded by the Digital Skills Foundation, um, which is a, a, an online program they do within classes. And that's come directly out of Cyber Centurion now, um, uh, as, as a, trying to broaden even the reach into the younger years and, and, and generally. So yeah, I mean, uh, Gibraltar's uh, my poster child. <laughs> You. Thank you so much to Deep and Charlene and Nitya and David for um, your time and contribution. It is much appreciated. Um, particularly Nitya and Charlene, I wish you the best of luck uh, in Cyber Security and 7 and look forward to hopefully seeing you maybe even face to face if um, COVID heads in the right direction um, in the finals uh, next year. And uh, thank you very much indeed for everyone's contribution to the debate and uh, we hope to see Certainly, everyone who's um, participated this morning is more than welcome to attend the finals next year, be they physical or virtual. So thank you very much indeed for your time.